Firebrand. Yeah? Ow! <sighs> There's something you need to see. What could be more important than this Mako? Ow! If you'd be a deer and have Vivid put down the curling iron and come with me, your idiot guards have done it again. Celestia, darn it! When did they do this time? I don't like change! You look so pretty! I almost don't want to ruin your face when you scream at them! What. Did. They. Do. <sighs> this is why I can't even go to the bathroom around here and leave them unsupervised. Here we are. Ta-da! Which idiot let this thing in?! <coughs> it said present for Firebrand on it, so... Well, we might as well see what's in it. Damage has already been done. Sha-la-la-la-la-la, <laughs> my oh my, look like the boy too shy, ain't gonna kiss the girl. Sha-la-la-la-la-la, ain't that sad, ain't a shame, too bad, he gonna, he, he gonna kill me. Um, I'm jumping the gun a bit, aren't I? Just a tad. Fine. Well, since I'm here... Can I do that collab thingy with you? All the cool kids are doing it. If you can refrain from breaking out into song, then yes. I only promise to try. This is the Fields and the McColts. So, this episode starts out with Fluttershy. Hooray! I love Furry Friends Book Club! I can see why you wanted to review this one with me. Hey, Fluttershy might be worse main six, but I'd be lying if sitting around reading classic literature with animal friends wasn't one of my childhood dreams. So, Fluttershy is sent to the map table... Wait, hang on, following it wasn't how the other ones worked? How'd that happen? I don't know. Turns out they need to go to something called the Smoky Mountains that aren't particularly smoky. Uh, they take a balloon that's conveniently outside. You know, the balloon is in the intro, which we don't talk about, but not often do we see ponies travel by it. We see airships and the occasional helicopter, but those are even rarer. Is air travel some sort of luxury? I mean, it's common for Pegasi to take the train, which I'm pretty sure is free public transportation. Travel on Equestria is certainly odd. Next, they'll be telling us a slingshot is viable travel. Anywho, they find that the two cities on each mountain summit are pelting each other with food. It's Flibberaloo. What? Flibberaloo! The first short in VeggieTales' Are You My Neighbor? Except instead it was an adaptation of the Good Samaritan, and they threw shoes and pots. Well, the only Good Samaritans here are the two ponies sent by the map. I am Twilight Sparkle, the Princess of Friendship, and I'm here to solve your friendship problem. I'm Fluttershy, and, um, I'm here too. <laughs> my YouTube career in a nutshell. So Twilight tries to talk to the Hooffields when Fluttershy notices, ah! They're about to launch rodents! Do something! What? How dare they hurt rats? Actually, I think they're mice. Oh, then I don't care. <laughs> so they head over to the McColts and knock because the bell is out of order. Hey, wait! You're an alicorn! Someone noticed! There are four alicorn princesses in Equestria now. <laughs> Every pony assume we're spies. Because we don't get a lot of visitors. I'm Big Daddy McCult. So, why do they call him that when he's small? I think it's supposed to be ironic. What? Ironic. You know, the use of words to express something other than, and especially the opposite of, the literal meaning. Usually a humorous or sardonic literary style of form. You got beat up in school a lot, didn't you? Yes. We're in the middle of a giant feud with our terrible neighbors! Neighbors! Jeez, Black Canary, you taking dragon's shout lessons from Sindel? You got all those references in there. Oh, I'm just getting started. I care. If you ain't for us, you're against us. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. You know, that's an interesting quote, seeing as that quote itself is an absolute. You could say that it's bad writing, but you could also say that the Jedi have become so complacent and haughty that they aren't aware of their own hypocrisy. There's a lot we can- Ponies, sweetie. Ponies. Right! Sorry! 
We'll be stuck eating the pumpkins the Huffield's launched at us. Pumpkin bread, pumpkin soup, pumpkin quesadillas. <gasps> oh, okay. You want some tacos too? Maybe some taquitos? Stop. <laughs> You're making it worse. So Twilight uses a spell she learned from Cornelius Fudge and attempts to spoon feed the moral. And that's the thing, just telling people to do good things doesn't always work. They have to be shown and or come to the conclusion themselves. Oh yeah, they should be glowing any minute now. Any second now. What are you doing? I asked you to stop fighting. Oh, is that what you were hollering about? We thought the McColts rubbed you the wrong way. What part of Twilight's speech indicated that? Are you deaf? Ah, oh, dang it, they got me doing it too. Really? Sounds normal to me. Reload the tomato slingshots! We're gonna paint their mountaintop red! See? Red! No, wait, that's blood. So after a long series of unsuccessful persuasion attempts, Twilight and Fluttershy learn that neither side remembers why they're fighting and they just want to win. They convinced the Hooffields to bake an apology cake. Which part of my argument changed your mind? The part where I said the benefits of friendship outweigh the cost of war? Or the part where I said forgiveness is an investment in happiness? Yeah, yeah, all of it! Wait, are you even listening to me? It's a trap! Seriously, how can they fall for something that old? Same way you did. I did you! Anyways, an all-out war begins between them, and Twilight begins to feel completely defeated. Then Fluttershy uses her Disney princess powers to gather the animals. Oh, you poor things! There isn't enough food here for you! It's almost like the weasel might be forced to eat meat! Like a weasel should! He is literally surrounded by his natural prey! And I don't know what Fluts is talking about. There is literally food everywhere. Granted, it's in pieces and being thrown at them at high velocity, but food is food, and I don't think animals are that picky. You know, sometimes I feel like the ponies have controlled nature to the point where the animals have become spoiled. It's like all of nature are pets to them. They're unable to survive without them unless it's the Everfree Forest. Then Miko here tells them that they know what happened. Which I am calling bullshit on right now. If the friggin' Hoofields and McColts don't remember how and why the fighting started, then how would the squirrels know? Was it passed down in tradition all this time? Is it like a secret society of squirrels? Or did they pull a great divide and just flat out lie to them? Given the lifespan of squirrels is 10 years on average, I wouldn't put it past them. The integrators get on that. So then Twilight goes Zawarudo and stops everyone. Fluttershy, you have to tell them! Ugh, it's a lot harder to freeze an army of ponies than just six of them! While I adore that little continuity nod, you know, you could just drop the fruit ammo. I mean, you didn't include Fluttershy in your free spell, so you can obviously aim it. Then, Fluttershy explains that the feud basically resulted from two friends trying to do something nice. They just disagreed on the method. I remember a philosopher friend once saying something. Every political debate can be narrowed down to one question. What is the true definition of compassion? And those who forget that, or don't realize it, are the ones that taint their cause. And that's the state of politics. In theory, we come together to deliberate and find solutions to problems. The issue is we get so wrapped up in fighting for or against a team, we get so dead set on winning, that the ones around us get trampled and suffer. I mean, look at this little exchange right here. What do you hope to get out of fighting? The satisfaction of winning! Of winning what? The fight, of course! And it's hard. The impulse to be right in the end is overpowering. The problem is when we are so focused on the fight that we forget what we were originally fighting for. Or rather, who we were fighting for. A selfless act quickly becomes selfish if we give in to pride and lose ourselves in the feud. We really have to give props to the episode for perfectly portraying this idea without directly stating it. Give this little moral to kids in a way that's digestible and plants the little seeds of understanding. So in the end, the tramp stamps get their flashes of approval and they ride off into the sunset. And that's the episode. While there isn't as much to chew on or make fun of than previous episodes, the moral at the end more than makes up for it. Quite a few moments made me laugh, particularly how Big Daddy McColt says, Hoofields! Hoofields! That's my new meme for the next month. You're welcome, Internet. This episode wasn't exactly my favorite of the season, but it was still pretty enjoyable. Or at least there wasn't any cringe. 
There were heartfelt moments here and there, and overall I'd say the episode was quite entertaining, if nothing else. Good laughs, good moral, good clean country fun. So, who's up for more Disney karaoke? Stranger!